The Battle of Benghazi featured extraordinary acts of courage and heroism. For 13 hours, six American heroes waged a fierce firefight to hold off enemy attackers against all odds. And now, one of them is giving credit to God for helping him survive. Today, on Jewish Voice with Jonathan Bernis. Shalom and welcome to Jewish Voice, where we help you to discover the Jewish roots of your Christian faith. I'm Jonathan Burnus. On September 11, 2012, the American Embassy and a CIA compound nearby in Benghazi, Libya, were overrun by terrorists. Six men displayed unbelievable courage against all odds to protect those buildings and emerged as true American heroes. One of them is here today with us to share what really happened that fateful night, and he credits God with getting him through this. Please welcome Chris Tonto Peranto. Yeah. Hey, Chris, welcome hey, back. Thanks for Great to have you back with us. Thank you. I, I am awestruck by the story of those 13 hours and the bravery, the courage that you guys displayed, which was, we're not, we're not going to let, leave anyone behind. Yeah. And we're going to lay our life on the line to, to serve yeah. these guys. Is that just yeah. the mentality of all you guys that I think, are working I, I think, as contractors? Uh, uh, definitely. I, I think it generates first when you're getting in the, in the military, when you first sign up for the Army, Navy, or the Marine Corps, or the Air Force. Um, and then when you go in the special ops community, that's where it's, it's, it's uh, reinforced continually. It's you're sacrificing yourself for your teammate. Your teammate comes first. Uh, people that are, can't protect themselves, they come first. And you're, you're putting your life on the line for them. Uh, and God is in the military, at least it was when I was in, quite a bit. Um, and yeah, every, uh, you know, every, every, every Sunday in your basic training, you, you go to church. Because when the bullets start flying, it makes no difference what so your religion is. So, is it a is. culture, or is it the reality? We're, we're, we, well, our life might be required of us tomorrow. I, I think, I think it's real. I think, you know, I think it's a little bit of both. At least when I was in, I can't speak nowadays within the military. You know, you were a ranger from. I was an army years. ranger with the 75th Ranger Regiment, 2nd Battalion, uh, out in Fort Lewis. For all you rangers out there, 2nd Battalion was the best unit, best <laughs> battalion out there. <laughs> Third bat, first bat, you guys are all right. All right. But anyway, but, but I, think it, I think it's both. I think it really is a little bit of both. And, and, and it's also how you're raised. You know, we were, you know, we're all of us contractors at that time, we were all in our 40s. So we're going back to the days when, when you know, that was yes, sir, no, ma'am, opening car doors. A lot uh, I remember raised, those days. Yeah, raised with, uh, with more class than I think most people have, the youngsters have nowadays. So it's, it, it's, it starts when you're young, but it just is continually reinforced as you move up in the community, especially when you get into special ops. And when you become a contractor, it's there. The seeds are already been planted and, and now they're sprouted and, and you're there to sacrifice yourself. We're there to, to protect. That was our job. Well, you, you certainly fulfilled your job with great courage and honor. Thank so you, we, 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 we honor you. Thanks, and all those that are watching that are veterans, that have put your life on the line for the country, we salute you and we bless you. And we thank you so much. Definitely. Chris, talk about that, 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 that whole day. Actually, talk about the time leading up to it because sure. there were repeated requests from uh, the ambassador himself yes. for more security. There, there was a sense something's you know, gonna happen here and we need more help. And, and Chris Stevens, Ambassador Stevens, a great man. Um, very, he's a patriot he be, and he believed in the Libyan people. He, he was, you know, he was uh, just an immense human being. Um, but getting into the security aspect of it, the, the consulate had been attacked twice before. And uh, also their British ambassador had been attacked as well, uh, severely actually, which the GRS element there in Benghazi at the time responded to that attack. We tried to respond to the two ID attacks and we were told to not go to those as well, which luckily nothing happened and there was no follow on. So the ambassador had been putting in multiple requests for more security. Uh, the State Department officers on the compound, Scott, uh, Scott Wicklin, Alec Henderson, and Dave Ubin, had been put in requests for more, more guns, bigger guns. Because uh, I remember telling them that if they ever got attacked with only rifles, they were going to, and I used an expletive, but they were all going to bleep and die. And, uh, Did they feel like their life was in danger? Yeah, I do. I, I, they knew they were undermanned. Because you could just tell in their eyes that they just, they, they knew they didn't have enough security there. They're, they're diplomatic security officers. They're trained as well. They know what they need. 
they're not going to ask for more than what they need. And they were continually asking for six months, and they just it just fell on deaf ears. What do you think was the overarching attitude in the State Department and in the administration? Let's not ruffle feathers. I think that's it. Let's. Uh, that's one of the things. Does, local solve, solve local problems. We're in this, their country. They need to provide security for us. Uh, we don't want to give an outward appearance uh, of being too aggressive. We don't, we're, we don't want to be the bullies. Yeah, anyway, that's what, that's what our, our State Department's views, I think, are now more than ever. We don't want to look at... But well, we, we know this is a country yes. loaded with, <laughs> with Muslim radicals. Yes. It's like we can't face that reality, can we? That we're... we're we're at war with with the with the we're, Muslim we're, uh, we're, jihadists. We're at war with with Muslim terrorists, with the, with the Islamists, and, and I fought alongside Muslims. There is a I I have guys that I can trust, but you can't trust a terrorist. You can't trust an Islamist. You cannot reason with them, and they were all over Benghazi and Derna down the road. Um, uh, and they knew that, and we had told them that because that was one of our jobs was to. Who see who was in the country just so we knew what bad guys were there. This is the same mentality that's trying to force Israel to to, yeah. to a two-state two solution without yeah. the security concerns, without realizing you can't trust people that have an agenda, a yeah. stated <clears throat> lifetime agenda to push Israel into the sea. I don't live in Israel, but I do know working with the IDF, and I do have friends, and I do support Israel. Um, as well, I do very much so that I, I do under, and I have been in rocket attacks as well. So I do understand but what it's like to be on edge 24 Certainly Libya, Yemen, you, you yeah, have okay. a very clear you idea. Know, and, and, you know, Baghdad, some was dangerous at a time. You know, Kabul's a place where you should buy a summer home, so is, so is Kandahar. <laughs> um, but, you, you know, it's, it's, uh, it, they don't understand what's, what the Israeli people have to live with every day. That there could, you're at a beach and, and a, you might get hit by a rocket. They don't understand that, and 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 uh, until it happens to them, they still won't understand because you it, it, they won't listen. That's how our leaders, I believe, our leaders are nowadays, and it, it was exemplified in Benghazi. The leadership that could have helped, that could have provided more security, same as what we're doing now. Do not listen to the guys on the ground or the people that are actually experiencing what's going on there. And that was where the problem was in Benghazi. And, it's a perfect example of why we are not listening and supporting Israel as we need to. Why the cover-up? Why this whole State Department uh, and and uh, the administration uh, saying that this was an angry mob as a result of some video and, and really calling a f a friends liars, yeah, dear that, friends liars? And that, that was tough to, to hear and see. And it, when I turned the TV on in Germany the next day and, and saw Susan Rice saying something about a video in a protest, honestly, I just turned it off. And I, on my head, I was just, you know, it's typical, par for the course. I shouldn't, I mean, just me thinking like that is, is wrong uh, because there obviously, I, I already had known that there was very little trust in the U.S. government towards guys like us on the ground. We're worried about going to jail if we shoot a bad guy, yeah. you know, let alone it's just crazy. dying. You're over in, in <laughs> yeah. harm's way defending American interests, yeah. defending Americans, and you don't have the, uh, uh, people watching your back at home. And it's, you know, it, it's a, uh, that's why I left. You know, that's why I left and went to Yemen because I felt like government had turned on us. Um, I felt like a lot of the American people had turned on us, uh, and it, it took me a long time to realize that now the government still, I don't think, has our back completely because it's still, you know, the family members are still even being being called liars of the family members of the, my teammates that died. Um, but I do know there are certain politicians there that that are coming around and supporting us, and I do know the American public is uh, becoming more and more vocal and supportive of us as Well, that's very clear. People are, people, yeah, people are angry. Yeah. And we have to channel that anger in a constructive way that brings change. I yeah. said that yesterday. And, of course, I believe that we have the only message as followers of the living God that can really change lives. The gospel is the only thing that can cause a terrorist, a jihadist, yeah. to become a lover of God and a lover of people, lover of Israel. I have friends that were former oh, I do too. terrorists that yeah. love God now, and it's they're transformed. I, I, I there's a and I wish I guess I don't know why I'm not remembering his name. A gentleman in Omaha that was with the Muslim Brotherhood. Now he's a Christian, um, and uh, he's a he's a tremendous example of of and can give you examples a lot better than I can of what the mistakes were is with Islamists and why it's great to be. It is a, God's a only peace plan, isn't yeah, it? I, it's yeah, the we, gospel's the only uh, solution we have. Yeah. So don't think, what can I do? I don't have anything. You have a relationship with God. You have prayer, yep. and you have the only answer for mankind. Hey, we have to take a break sure. in a minute. Just really quickly, 
John 15, 13. Yeah. Yep. This is inspirational. You proclaim it, you live it. Yes. What does John 15, 13 uh, love say? Love is no greater than this, that a man lay down his life for his friend. And, and my two teammates, uh, Glenn Bub Doherty and Tyrone Woods, uh, exemplified that by protecting, we saved 36 lives that night. And they gave their lives completely for it. They both died. So um, I think all, all guys overseas really live by that credo, and, and it, it needs to be recognized, and that's why we're Yes, amen. You know, Chris, that... That is the essence, that is the foundation of our faith, that God sent His Son to lay down His yes. life for us. He who knew no sin became sin for us, that we might be made the righteousness of God in Him. Incredible that you're living that out, and God is calling us to live out that truth and to serve a dying world. We have to take a break. Uh, when we come back, we're going to talk about the specific events of what happened with Chris Peranto, and then later we'll take you to a small village in Ethiopia that suffered for years without clean water. Many of their children were sick or dying until God sent us to help. It's a remarkable, inspiring story, so stay with us. Great. 13 Hours is the amazing story of what really happened during the Battle of Benghazi. Written by a New York Times best-selling author, this book features the only first-hand accounts of the brave men who went beyond the call of duty to fiercely protect an American diplomatic compound and CIA station. The book also details how one hero's unwavering faith in God helped make the difference between life and death. It will give you courage to press on to victory. We want to sow 13 hours into your life for a gift of $60 or more. The hardcover edition you receive will be personally autographed by Chris Peranto, today's guest, and one of the men who fought so bravely in the Battle of Benghazi. He is a sold out Christian who loves God. These are Jewish people in critical need. Your support helps us provide them and their neighbors with life-saving water purifiers. We've begun the work, but with your help, we will do so much more. Your gift today of $60 or more literally saves precious lives and souls for God's kingdom. Remember, God has promised to bless those who bless the Jewish people. This is your opportunity to receive that blessing. The need is urgent. People are dying and need to hear the good news of God's love found in Jesus the Messiah. Please call or click now to help us save and transform lives. If you're just joining us, my guest is Chris Tonto Peranto. He's an American hero. And Chris, this is a riveting book about uh, bravery. In, in, you guys thought you were going to die, right? Well, you, you never think you're going to die. It's, you accept the fact that if you do, you do. You, what we thought was is that we were going to be in a pretty good firefight for uh, quite a while. What we didn't expect was uh, no U.S. assets coming to help us. That was a little bit of a shock. Now, you were told not... There, there's, this, there's some controversy uh, about this, and but there, we love controversy. There shouldn't be a controversy, but there you is. You were told not to... Not to uh, not to go. Not to go. Three times. You were told to stand down. One time we're, when specifically the word stand down were used once to John Tig Tigan. We were told to wait twice. Now to me, and I, t I testify this too, that's semantics. Bottom line is wait, stand down, don't go. It's all the same to me because we're not allowed to go. But if, if people in the DC or the media, especially the left wing media want to get particular, the word stand down were used for us uh, within 15 minutes after we were called. Uh, from the State Department officer saying they were under attack and they needed our assistance. And you're being told, don't go, stand down, that's whatever. Hard. That's That's got to be hard. Yeah. That is, uh, especially when you can see the attack going on and you can hear our, our because we're friends with Scott, Alec, and Dave, the State Department officers, and they're saying, we need you. Jiras, where are you? And, and you can hear the panic. And when the, they're starting to cuss and say, where the F are you? And, and, you're, you've, and we've given our words that we would go help. Um, I you, can't even imagine torn. that feeling. And then to yes. be told that you're liars. And all oh, that, that yeah. was, that was, yeah, that still bothers me. And, and uh, um, uh, it, it always, when we still will be getting called liars, I'm sure within the media or within even social media, um, haven't been called that to my face yet. I'm still waiting on that. Um, maybe I can, 
exact some, exact some, well, I know we're on a, a Christian show, but maybe I can exact some frustration on the person that does that. You got to lay down your life here, man. This is, Chris, so you, was, was this, was this a breakdown in communication or was this, a, was this instructions yeah. from on high? Yeah, I'm not it, talking about the Lord, but yeah, no, do you think this higher. was, do you <laughs> think was, is it, was it a, a directive it, it, it was all a the directive. way from the top, yeah. don't go? No, for us, it was within the CIA local leadership, which was our chief of station, chief of base. I, and there, this is where the confusion is. There was two different stand downs or waits. One was ours that we know for sure we were told to stand down because the words were used. That was in the CIA leadership. The other one was where the military was getting people to come, General Ham at DOD, AFRICOM, and they were. Uh, Special Forces team was getting ready to come to us. They were pre-positioning the uh, 555th Fighter Wing. Their pilots were getting ready to come, and they were told by the State Department to not, they weren't needed. That's the question I can't answer there, because I don't know what was going I on. Heard, and you said, I heard you speak recently, and you said a flyover would have would probably have, scattered the crowd. Uh, Just a flyover. A flyover would have stopped the mortars uh, that would have come in. They were so deathly afraid because they what they have saw what they saw with American air power taking out Gaddafi, that and I'm telling you right now, the people in the audience having an F-15 or a 16 fly over you at 200 feet, that'll scare you. It, it, it'll it'll at least shake you up a bit, and make you think twice about coming out of your holes, and that was really all we needed. But there were so many assets available within that vicinity, and you reached a point where you just said, "We're going." You guys just said, "We're." The whole team did, and it was beautiful. It was on. It was. You such just a, made a decision, even if we. We, this is the end of our career, we're going. And you know, it's not only that, what goes through our heads too is, is uh, uh, we don't, we, contractors in, in uh, the fight for the United States and help protect diplomatic, uh, diplomats do not have very good insurance. We have this thing called the Vince Base Act that is it's very, very, uh, it's, it's typical wordy insurance that doesn't cover anything. In fact, Glenn Doherty's family is still fighting them to get his death benefits. So we realized that if we did leave, because we're disobeyed orders, because if we, uh, we're not going, uh, we're not staying within our scope of duties, that not only if we were hurt over at the consulate, we had no insurance to cover our injuries, but if we died over there, um, our families would not get their life insurance benefits. So that was not only losing our jobs, but also it would have affected our family members. And if we were injured, like I said, we have, we're on our own. So, uh, but that, that doesn't matter. You, this you, is the gospels ringing in my ear, yeah. the words of Jesus that they persecuted me, they'll persecute you. You have to, there's a price yeah. to pay. And there still is. In laying down your life. There there's a is. price to pay. Yeah. All this is so parallel, but you made the decision just together, we're going. We're and, and, and that was why God had that team there that night. Myself, Ty, and Boone were supposed to go home two weeks before the attack, and we all extended. We all stayed together because that team, and I'm not saying we all were best friends, but we, the team worked so well together. And there's no doubt in my mind that God said, this is, he knew it was going to happen. And he said, you guys, he need, sure to, you guys need to be there. He sure did. Yeah. So you went, you decided to go, and you drove into a, an absolute mess. It was just chaos. Uh, I remember we driving into it. And, and again, the media doesn't, doesn't get you there. They don't tell you this. Only people that have seen the movie or read the book or hear me speak. Um, we had to stop 400 meters from the front gate because it, we had lost the initiative. There was heavy weapons protecting the front gate. Ansar Sharia and Al-Qaeda in the Maghreb were the two groups that attacked the consul that night. And they, they did what any good group would do. They, they blocked off the positions that we could come into by vehicle. So we stopped and there was, a, there was a local militia there, but there was only one guy that was actually fighting. The rest of them, it looked like a, a bunch of cats where you throw firecrackers and the cats are jumping around. So it was mass chaos. And I remember Boone looking at me as we're driving up going, we waited 25 minutes for this. It was a statement more than a question, and I, you know, but I understood, like, it's ridiculous. And then, yeah, and then you get out of the car and that's the snaps. The bullets start whizzing and as a contractor, when the bullets start snapping by your head, you realize they're shooting at us. Okay, now we can go on the offensive and that's what we did. And, and Tig, John Tig Tigan, fantastic job that night. He, he pulls out a 40 millimeter grenade launcher and he starts shooting back at the heavy weapons down the road. And, Myself and Boone start sneaking through backyards and it took us about another half hour to go 400 meters. So, you, know, you get the smile on your face when you talk <laughs> about the uh, yeah. bullets flying by and the popping. There's it, just, you are a warrior. I, just, I'm you're not wired a warrior. that way. I, uh, warrior, <laughs> warrior or crazy, I don't know. It's there, it turns, it's a, there's a fine line. It's a fine line. We, we enjoy it. And we enjoy, in fact, that's why I deployed for so long. And then even during breaks between my GRS contracts, I would go to Egypt and I'd get on a ship and right across the coast of Somalia, fighting pirates, fighting pirates, sound like Captain you're Jack just, Sparrow. You're, like, you're wired that way, but God is looking for warriors. He's looking for people 
that will step out, uh, that may be viewed by the world as crazy. And he may be calling you to do something that's absolutely insane. Nobody understands you, and it is God. Go and do it. Walk out in yeah. faith. Hey, uh, there's, a, there's an expression, uh, there's no atheist in foxholes. No, what never. does that mean to you? That means that um, when your life is flashing before your eyes, or your life as you know it's in danger, you come to realize that, that there's a higher power out there. And that hey, you may not, if you're an atheist, you don't believe in afterlife until your life on this earth may be gone. And all of a sudden that afterlife is, it's there. And, and so I, I, it takes that Christ situation, that, that life or death uh, feeling that hits you in the face, literally, um, to make you realize that you know, there is a higher power there. There is somebody that's actually taking care of us and giving us our spirits and giving us the, uh, the ability to, to live our daily lives and love and, and love and hate and have all those feelings. Um, but I, I think atheists, I think it's just the easy way out because you, you don't have to live by our responsibilities. You don't have to live by the Bible. If there is a God, there's responsibilities. Yeah, you there know, I'm, Chris, there's a beautiful uh, verse in scripture that says to be absent in the body is to be present with the Lord. In other words, the minute that, you're, that you, your spirit's released yep. with the death of the body, you're present with, with the, the Lord. Lord. Yep. And, and that's true for all of you. Maybe you haven't made that commitment to the Lord and you don't know what's going to happen after you die. I do. And there's one name given under heaven by which we must be saved. Chris and I have come to believe in that one way, and his name is Jesus, Yeshua in Hebrew. It's an amazing, amazing book. Uh, it's inspirational. It will give you courage. It will give you hope to go on, and it will, it will just grip you. 13 hours. We're, we're, we want to sow this into your life. We want to give it to you as a gift as you enable us to help people that absolutely will die without clean water to drink. Imagine never having clean water to drink. It's something that we all take for granted. And until recently, the population of a small village of Jews in Ethiopia suffered from polluted water. Many of their children died or suffered from sickness and disease. But now, because many of you helped, they have clean water. The story you're about to see is an amazing example of what we can accomplish together with your help. Take a look. Shalom from a rural village here in northern Ethiopia on the outskirts of Tachgait. We're here with an entire community that identifies as Beta Israel. We've been able to commit this morning to providing every household in this community, which is 100 huts or households, with a family life straw. It's going to provide clean drinking water, no matter where the water comes from, for an entire family for an entire year. You can see the water they really did need this filtration system. This is where a lot of the source of a, a lot of their health issues come from, is this very, very dirty water. We believe that Jewish Voice wants to bless this community with these life straw water filters. This one is for an entire family. However, we also would like to bless them with living water that is eternal. They had heard that Jewish Voice was coming to help and bringing a clinic. And a lot of these people didn't make it to the clinic. So Jewish Voice has taken life straws to them. They welcomed us like we were brothers, which we are. And it was just so, so touching to be able to give. They were so hungry to receive. showing them how to use them so that they can have fresh water. And that's what the Lord is doing because the Lord loves them so much. Oh, we're just so, so blessed to be here. They just received us with their arms open and they're just willing to, to hear the gospel. They're willing to receive that. And uh, it is such a blessing to be here. We're thrilled to be able to be a blessing in this way. And we've shared with the people that as they, as they take each cup of clean water out of this life straw, they would remember the Lord's love for them and the love of God's people for them. And that they would remember we're praying for them. These are Jewish people in critical need. 
Your support helps us provide them and their neighbors with life-saving water purifiers. We've begun the work, but with your help, we will do so much more. Your gift today will literally save precious lives and souls for God's kingdom. Remember, God has promised to bless those who bless the Jewish people. This is your opportunity to be that blessing. Help us make a difference. The need is urgent. Anything you can do will touch lives. Help us share God's love with those who have never heard. We want to sow 13 hours into your life for a gift of $60 or more. The hardcover edition you receive will be personally autographed by Chris Peronto, today's guest, and one of the men who fought so bravely in the Battle of Benghazi. This book offers a first-hand account of what really happened, as told by the courageous American heroes who survived. It will give you courage to press on to victory. Please call or click right now to help us save and transform lives. It's absolutely incredible. You, you can't imagine it until you see these people with your own eyes and the gratitude that they express for a simple water purifier. In places like Ethiopia, little goes such a long way. We, we have so much more work to do together we can literally rescue people from death and transform their lives forever. We don't have a moment to lose, so anything that you can do will make a difference in their lives one life at a time. Well, that'll wrap up this edition of Jewish Voice. Before I leave you, though, I want to remind you, as I always do, to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They need our prayers more than ever. Chris Tanto Peranto will be back with us again tomorrow, so don't miss it. In the Battle of Benghazi, six brave Americans became heroes after holding off enemy attackers for 13 grueling hours. It was the ultimate test of courage and faith. This inspiring real life story next time on Jewish Voice with Jonathan Burnus. Join Jewish Voice Ministries as we tour the Holy Land and celebrate Israel 2017. It's time to honor the 50-year anniversaries of Jewish Voice and the liberation of Jerusalem. On this trip, you'll stay in five-star accommodations as we tour Mount Carmel, Nazareth, Jerusalem, the Mount of Olives, Upper Room, and more. You'll see Jonathan Burnus commemorate the recapture of Jerusalem right where it happened. We'll also visit an Israeli military base and enjoy a Bedouin meal. You can renew your marriage vows on the Sea of Galilee and participate in an immersion ceremony at the Jordan River. As an added bonus, you can even visit Eilat, the Red Sea, and world-famous Petra. Act now before this once-in-a-lifetime event sells out. Call and speak with our events coordinator to learn more exciting details about Celebrate Israel 2017 or visit jvmi.org slash Israel.